do, 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 do. Welcome to Lair by Lair. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Lair by Lair edition, the live edition. Um, yeah, so this week's project, actually next week's project is this over here. So what I figured I'd do is kind of share with you guys um, a feature called Pattern Pattern on Path, which I found very useful for this project. Um, so let's kind of jump right into it. Yeah, so there I am, tunnel view and another tunnel view. So I put this together in Fusion 360, of course, and this is uh, an enclosure that has six sides. And what you remember from last week, um, I put together a simple enclosure with these little nubs. So if I open up the kind of top here, and let me get rid of these guys here. You can see I got these little nubs going on here. So for the last week's uh, project, it used these little nubs and then there's like a little indentation for the cover so that you can snap these in and it'll hold the two pieces together nicely. So what I ended up doing for that one was manually making one nub and one indentation for every side, right? So I had to do that four times. Well, with this project, uh, because it's symmetrical, I was able to do this with kind of make a copy of, of this, uh, this set of faces and kind of duplicate it and and patternize it across a, a path. So that's what I'll be showing you guys here. It was very, very handy. Um, I was starting like by making each nub by hand like manually and then I realized there's gotta be a better way to do it. So let's kind of recreate this shape and then just kind of work through uh, how, how you can use the, the feature. So I'll start off with a new document and I will just draw a, uh, a polygon so I like using the, uh, the circumscribed polygon. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I'll draw on this, this flat plane here. And I'll just kind of draw in the center and kind of drag it out. Let's make it, I don't know, 30 millimeters. Why not, as a radius, hit OK. And then I'll extrude it out using E on my keyboard, maybe make it 20 millimeters. And why not shell it out? I, I'm really loving the model toolbox, which lets you, uh, it's like a magic window that can pop up anywhere wherever your cursor is. So I'll just hit S over here and you can drag it around and do all sorts of stuff. Um, so I'm going to say shell and then click on that face, maybe make it one millimeter. Why not? Okay. So now I can start working on sort of the nub thing. So, you know, pick a, pick a spot. It doesn't matter which one. I'll probably just pick this one and then create a sketch. And then let's see here. Let me give me one second here. Hello. Hello. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's make the nub part. Uh, using the center rectangle, this guy here. And then I'll just kind of draw it over here. I'll make it the same dimensions that we did last time, so uh, two by 10. And then I'll use collinear to kind of uh, constrain it to that edge over there on the top of the enclosure. And then I'll just go ahead and extrude it with the E command and make it one millimeter. And then I'll do a chamfer and then put one there as well. All right, so now I got a nub, right? So now, how do we how do we make a copy of this guy uh, six times and make them kind of flush on these things? So you could do like a mirror and then just mirror this over here and then make another one mirror, but that's not the way. That's not the right kind of way to do it. And we can't use a. So here's all the patterns that we can do, right? We can do a circular pattern, rectangle pattern, and then pattern on path, and that's what we'll be using today. So I'm gonna pick that. And the pattern type is set to faces if it's set to you, but you could change it to bodies or features or components. But in this case, we just want to do the faces. So I'll select the faces. There's only four, uh, the little triangle profile, uh, the bottom and the top edges here, and then the one on the right side here like that. The next thing to do is to pick uh, a path. So I'm going to pick this path over here. So I'm not going to pick that one because the nub is kind of intersecting with it and creating three lines instead of just one. So I'm going to pick on the outside. So pick on that. Um, so we kind of want to pick all of these, right, to make it go across the all of the six sides. So I'm going to just select these guys. I'm not holding anything down. It's just it just kind of when you click an edge, it just sort of adds to that selection. All right. So I got all the all six of them selected. And the next thing to do is to add uh, a distance. So I don't know what the distance should be. So I'm just going to grab this out here like that and you can see it's kind of pulling that out and then it's pulling the copies out and then what I'll do is I'll change the distance type from extend to spacing so that I have not a, a, a full length but a spacing element to it like there there's a, a distance between those two copies or whatever copies quantities of them uh, speaking of quantities let's turn that to a six 
And now you can see that they're kind of not in the right orientation. Well, that's because they're set to identical by default. If you make it path direction, then they will all kind of try to follow the path. You see that one out there is a little bit messed up. So as you start dragging this out, watch what happens. Actually, what you want to do is as you start dragging it out, you get these little, uh, you see these kind of white um, little pointers. They kind of disappear as soon as I let the, the mouse button go. So it's hard to me to show it to you, but if you look right under my cursor, let me go over here because my face might be over it, but you'll see that it's snapping there, that little blue circle at the end of the of the uh, of the arrow. That's telling that fusion. That's fusion telling us that it is in the center of that uh, path or that that edge. So we know that this is exactly in the center, and it's very important to do that. Uh, that it's very centered and, and symmetrical. Um, but if you didn't do, if you didn't know that. Let's go ahead and hit OK, just to pin that, and, and that's pretty much it. We got our copies, and that's awesome. But one, one thing I'll tell you about, like if you didn't know like, uh, what the, the distance should be, you can easily find out. So you kind of need to do a little bit of math. So what we'll need to do is figure out the length of this loop, right? The length of this point going all the way across and going back. So how long is that? The way to find out is actually kind of easy. You can click on uh, the surface here. And then use inspect, it's a measure inspect or, or the hot command I on your keyboard. And it'll tell you how, what the loop length is. So it's 207 millimeters, uh, 207.846 millimeters. So I'm going to copy that just by clicking it. And then if I go back into uh, the, the path pattern by double clicking on it, you can actually do a little bit of math here. So instead of having that, that distance there, let's say we didn't know that, or we didn't have that, that's, that, that feature, uh, you can paste that and then just divide it by the amount of uh, sides that we have, which is six. And that's exactly the, the same number. So you can, you can do that. Um, and yeah, 34.641. <laughs> so that's just another kind of way to, to do it, I think, is, is kind of like a food for thought thing. Um, but that's basically it. So now we have this. Now I want to show you another way to do it. So if you guys remember the pie girl case, um, instead of doing one little piece of nub on each on each kind of side I actually did a sweep and I sweep I swept this nub across the entire uh, case and there's I'll tell you some reasons why I'm not doing it uh, for this project but I'll show it how, how to do it anyway right so let's grab this and suppress it just to kind of deactivate it so I'm gonna right click on the timeline and say suppress feature and now it's grayed out so we're back to just our original master copy nub and what I'll do is I'll do a sweep. So I'll bring up the model toolbox and type in sweep, hit enter. And the first thing I need to select is the profile. So it's going to be this little guy, the little triangle. And then I need a path, right? So what I'll do is just like we did, I'll select all six of these. And instantly, as soon as you click on the path, you'll see what it's doing here. Right now it's set to cut, but we can change that uh, to, whoops, I selected the wrong one we can change this to join so it's not a cut. And if you had to fill it on these edges, Fusion is smart enough and it'll actually make it a, a full loop chain, like a chained loop instead of having to pick each thing. But I didn't put a fillet there, so whatever. Now I'll change the operation from cut to join and you're pretty much done, hit okay. So now you got this, uh, this nub that's like swept across all, all six edges. So really, really simple and easy to do that. Um, but why didn't I do this for this project, right? Uh, mainly because I think that you, there's some issues that can happen with with having a, a nub that's all the way around, and, and basically some people were were having issues where the the lip would break, it wasn't thick enough, or it was just kind of prone. There's just a lot of friction points uh, for the things to clamp together that it actually makes it a little bit harder to remove. So at least with this way, you can kind of dig your finger under here and open it if you need to. If you don't need to, then maybe the clamping the sweep method is the way you want. So that's basically what I wanted to show you guys, and maybe I'll do uh, a little kind of preview. So here's what it looks like when you 3D print it. Um, those are the nubs on all six edges, and then the indentations. You got to have that indentation here. Um, to find out how to make the lid version, be sure to watch my last uh, tutorial, uh, last week's tutorial. And then uh, the, the nubs all came out nice like that over here. Let me see if I can kind of get a better focus real quick or slow probably like that yeah so now how do you get them in so it's a bit of like 
trouble. So you kind of get to get one side in and then just kind of force each side in there. Uh, there we go. And now you can imagine that um, if this was swept across all the edges, it'd be a little bit more difficult to do it. Um, all of these snapped in just fine. So it's, <laughs> sorry about the noise, but it's, it's pretty nice. Now it bulges a teeny bit, not a lot. And some of them it's nice and flush, but uh, for the most part, it is definitely strong in there. So to, so to kind of take this out, you can, you can dig your nail in there and kind of press it out. Yeah, that's on there good. And one of the questions I got was like, how, uh, you know, how will this loosen over time? Um, maybe, but for now, I think a, a few dozen times will probably last a while. I cannot pull these apart right now. Let's see if I can, the struggle is real here. Um, Maybe I need a tool to do it. I mean, obviously I did this before. <laughs> and it's never coming out now. It's forever locked in place. Yeah. I'll mess with it later. <laughs> but there you go. A super tight snug fit that will never come undone. No, I'm sure, I'm sure I can get it open. It's just a little bit difficult. Here's, here's, here's how to make a cover that will never come off your enclosure. There you go, it's kind of coming out. There you go. So as you dig your nail in there, you just kind of got in there. Now, if it was, again, if this was a sweep, it'd be even harder because I wouldn't have any, um, I wouldn't have any flat edges to work with. So that came off. It was a little hard, but we got it open. Cool. So that's really it. It was kind of a quick tip today just to kind of show you guys like, hey, I, I haven't really used a uh, pattern on a path yet. And it really worked out here for this project. And um, if I'd known about it on last week's project, I would have showed it to you then. But that's what I have this week. So what I'll do now is jump over to um, the chat because this is a live stream and just kind of take any questions. If anyone has any questions or any better alternatives on how to do that, let me know. Um, Let's see, bow the center uh, is, a, is a suggestion. Yeah, you could probably uh, bow the center to kind of pop that lid off. Okie dokie. Uh, anybody have any questions? Please feel free to drop them here. Uh, CAD related questions though. Yep. Cool. Add a pull hole in the middle. Hey, that's a good idea. Because then you can you can uh, pu push it from the inside. Cool. Good, good idea, uh, George. Uh, what program is? Yeah, so this is Fusion 360. Uh, I'll have a download link down below where you can download it for free. Um, the way uh, they do it is. Um, by it's sort of a subscription model but not really if you're a maker or a hobbyist you can register for free on Autodesk website download it and then sign up for the one year um, subs the one year maker license which allows you to use all of the tools and all the features uh, for a year and then after that year is up you can renew it for free they do it in this weird way, weird way but it's free uh, definitely I think uh, yeah, so what's sort of the tolerances? George is asking a question, what's the tolerances? Um, it depends. Uh, I, I usually do 0.2 millimeter of an offset so that the indentation is away from the nub from 0 0.02 millimeters. But it depends on your printer and your slicer and other variables. But you're usually doing about 0.2 to 0.3, sometimes 0.1. Let's see, any other questions? Uh, Ryder's asking if I joined Discord. Is that, is that a question for me? I have not played with Discord yet. Um, I just stick to Twitter and uh, if it's a chat type thing, yeah, I just stick to kind of Twitter and, uh, and Instagram. 
but I'll check it out if there's uh, sort of a, a demand for it. <laughs> Uh, how would you? How would that compare to one two three design or SketchUp make? Um, so I started off with a one two three D sort of. I did quite a few tutorials in one two three D design, but I quickly switched once uh, I kind of overgrew the app where I started using lots of components. I needed a timeline history. I needed parametric uh, features. So that's why I moved over to Fusion three sixty. Uh, so if you are uh, in the same boat where you need more uh, sort of more features and you're, you're messing with a bunch of parts in one assembly. Fusion 360 is a great option. There are, of course, other options out there. Uh, George is asking if I use fillets to reinforce the pegs for screws. Uh, yeah, so like standoffs, yeah. Adding a fillet or even a chamfer probably better. Um, so yeah. Why don't I just use screws? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. I did used to use screws a lot. Um, screws are okay. They're definitely fine. But, um, if you can build, if you can build in things in the 3d part, um, why use screws, right? Uh, another thing with screws is that normally you're kind of, you have to allocate extra space for standoffs for corner standoffs for joining two pieces together. So for me, it, you, you actually get a much more space. You can make things smaller. With, when you don't need screws. Because a lot of the project enclosures that do use screws, they have these corners uh, in, the, in the spaces allocated for those, uh, for those uh, standoffs for the, for the screws to go into. Uh, George is saying, a suggestion, could you show how to make your own support structure for dual extrusion setup? Um, that's an interesting one. Um, so I'm so accustomed to using the support material from Fus uh, from Simplify 3D that I haven't really had to make my own support, but I think I've done it in the past. Um, it might be worth taking a look at, yeah. Definitely possible. All right, well, if anyone ever has any other questions or suggestions, go ahead and drop them. Um, yeah, I have a pile of something. You know, one thing kind of interesting is that I really like this protopasta material, uh, the coffee PLA from protopasta. And it's, so it looks like a dark material, right? Let me look at the right screen. There we go. So it looks like, uh, let me see here. Get that auto focus off. Yeah, so I, it's just kind of like a test circuit that I, that I use a lot for testing light diffusion. And there's variable thicknesses so that the ring here is actually thinner than uh, the thickness of the outer like cover. And this just kind of works really well um, as a sort of diffuser. So that's where the NeoPixel ring is going to go for this project. And it's super overblown. So let me see if I can fix that for you. Still looks overblown. Man, these, these pixels are just too bright. So there you go. Kind of works like that. That red really pops with it. And it's further, the further you go away, the more diffusion you get. So uh, again, this project is a, a MIDI controller, so all of these LEDs won't be on. It's just kind of like, and you can see through it. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. I recently switched um, switched out my old zebra plate. On, so this was printed on the FlashForge uh, printer, the Creator Pro. And man, I'm so happy that I got a new bed because now it's really nice. It's the zebra skins, the print in Z zebra skins. They're so awesome. So I recommend those too. But that's about it, really. Let me check the chat again. Yeah, isn't it cool? Light rig? Yeah, it's or light ring, yeah, it's a NeoPixel ring, the 16 kind. So uh that's it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the the color brown is, is not the best, but I, I, I've really grown to like it. It has this kind of wood type uh, element to it. I don't know. I like it a lot. So I've been printing everything with uh, with coffee PLA. If you guys want to pick up any coffee PLA, you can pick it up from the Adafruit shop and get 10% off with code RGBW. <laughs> All right, cool. This is fun. I'm going to get started on uh, the, the guide for this project, and I'll see you guys later tonight on 
show and tell, which is at 7.30 p.m. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know if you have any uh, comments or suggestions or anything like that. Leave them in the comments. I always love reading them as well. Um, and if you want to download Fusion, I'll have a download link. Uh, I got to add it, though, after this recording. And uh, we'll try to do another live stream next Wednesday at around the same time, which is uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I will see you next time. But until then, good luck with all your maker endeavors. Bye, everybody.